Out of Oregon, the first book is a collection of about 90 pieces of logging and wilderness poetry, and the monotony of the poetry is broken up by short stories. And some of the characters and adventures I had logging in uh, Oregon here and up in the float camps of southeast Alaska back in the 80s. Born and raised in Oregon, spent most of my time in Eugene. Uh, my high school teacher said it'd probably be best if I left my junior year and go get a job or join the service, so I joined the Marines. And uh, I don't know, writing just kind of came to me by accident. Uh, you know, had I known everything that was involved in writing a book, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't have done it. Uh, especially with this computer thing, I swore I would never do that. But when you go to turn a manuscript in, I the guy said, how are you going to get a send me your manuscript? And I said, I'll just send her UPS. And he says, uh, no, we're going to have to have that on a floppy disk. I said, you quit talking to me like that. And uh, then he included me in about computers. And they just don't take them hard copy anymore. So I had to learn a computer. And that was almost my undoing. Uh, got through that. It took me about six months to get it figured out. The thing I write about, I lived, with the exception, sometimes I make up some uh, fictional characters like uh, Marlin Spike Mike, Old Growth Gus, Chisel Bit Chuck. Had a lot of help along the way. Good old Stub Stewart, we just buried him a couple weeks ago. He was a great help. The voices here at Paradise Lodge were a great help. And can't forget the little woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you come up here to Paradise Lodge to write, to relax? So uh, yeah, I come write? up here for the ambience. I wanted to do my writing where Zane Gray did, and I did. It's yeah, I beat set chokers in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like to set a choker? 40 feet long wire rope, steel rope, with a 16 pound steel bell on it. You pack them up and down hillsides just like that all day. Picture a yarder, 110 feet tall, guide down with eight guy lines at the top of that mountain that has a line strung over that mountain. And men all over the sides, probably a crew of three guys, and they slack that line down to you, and you set that some of these trees are huge trees. And you've got to feed that cable over them, under them, and hook the chokers. Then you've got to run out and get in the clear, and they have a little talky tutor on your hip, and you blow signal. Beep, beep, beep. The yarder engineer would raise the line up and drag them up the hill. Very dangerous work, because it's going up the hill. It'll dislodge boulders and other logs. They come rolling down, and uh, you've got to be way out of the way. So what are some of the yarder signals? Like you just went beep, beep, beep. Three, go ahead on her. Uh, two and one, slack the haul back. Three, what's, da what's danger? Everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty much uh, the whole time there. From the, from the time you get in a crummy and ride up, that can be the most dangerous. So there's one guy at the top, right in the yarder. Yeah, there's yarder You're engineer. down crawling around on the hill. There's a rig and slinger, hook tender, and a choker setter on the hillside for the rig and crew, and a chaser who undoes the chokers on the landing. What's a crummy? Crummy is a pickup a crew cab that the crew rides to work in. They call it crummies because as soon as we get into it, it turns all crummy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you normally stay at a logging camp overnight or up for weeks Alaska, at a time? Up in Alaska on remote islands, yeah. You go up there and you work seven days a week, ten hours a day till you can't stand anymore. Then you get your check and all charter a plane and fly into town and drink the check away and go back and do it again. Mm -hmm. And how long, how long would a logger work in Alaska? Depends. Uh, some of them come up. How many hours a day? Ten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of you work ten, no matter yeah. where you are. Yeah. Some. And what time do you more. start working? Oh, dark thirty. Mm -hmm. You ride mm -hmm. to work in the dark, and as soon as you get out of the crummy, the sun's coming up. You got to be able to see. Mm -hmm. And so some days you end in the dark. Mm -hmm. Most days. Yeah. Yeah. And how does somebody become a yarder operator? For example, you're scrambling around on the hills doing the... the um, you start low, you work Choking? your way up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have it's you ever run a yarder? A little bit, not professional. I just, you know, play around a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is it hard to do? I can't stand the noise. Mm -hmm. It's you got a lot of levers and you got men's lives in your hands, so you've got to be paying attention. Mm -hmm. How long have you been logging? 23 years. What's your favorite part of logging? Going home and heading for the tavern. <laughs> Have you ever seen anyone die logging? Three people. How did that happen, roughly? Two of them were riding the rigging out on sticks, and the yard engineer raised it up, and their sticks broke, and they fell to their death. Mm -hmm. And then one had a skitter back over him up in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And logging would be, aside from the death, still very dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been seriously injured, other than your mental uh, um, state? Well, ain't that enough? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Not as so much as a blunt trauma, but I'm all wore out. I've been hacked on 16 times. I mm -hmm. just went at it too hard, and now I'm paying the price. I'm very sad. Now, 
Alan Boyce, Court's dad, yeah. has said to me that every time he hears a yarder's whistle, it just turns into jelly, and it makes him want to go back out in the woods. That's true. It's the call of the wild for an old logger, an old timber beast. Alan still wears tagged off pants and a hickory shirt to this day. Yeah. And what's happening to logging in the state of Oregon globally? Are we logging as much as we ever oh, have? Oh, no, we're 10% of what we were in the 80s. It's come back a little bit, but it'll never be what it was, mm -hmm. and I guess rightly so. We got too good at what we do. With the advent of the steam engine back in the around the mm -hmm. turn of the century, mm -hmm. there was once held the popular opinion that uh, there will be enough trees forever. We got too good. Chainsaws and all this mechanization. and. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody had to roll up newspaper and hit us in the nose and say, pay attention, boys. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, you know, it's, it's, we hope someday to meet a happy medium between the environmentalist and the mm -hmm. logger. The best environmentalist is a logger because his life, livelihood comes from the woods. It behooves him that's to right. save them. That's right. And old growth, we've cut enough old growth.